Uh, this is Sergeant Beast Larson. Why do correction officers need traffic stop training to watch my video, The Seven Danger Zones of a Traffic Stop? I'm gonna tell you why, real quick, really quick. Do you not work a perimeter? If you work at a prison, there's perimeter officers and tower officers. You're in that perimeter. You may need to stop somebody on visitation day or a suspicious vehicle. Somebody driving, trying to do a, do a throw over the fence. Somebody with a drone. You may have located that person in the field. They'd go jump in a car, you need to pull them over. This is common sense, folks. You're in uniform have a badge. You need to know how traffic stops work and how to save your life. County jails, you do transports to court, sometimes, to the hospital, frequently. You work in a prison, there are transports. Inmates get stabbed, they get injured, they swallow razor blades, go to the hospital. You may be the escort vehicle to the ambulance. You may be the escort vehicle to a high-risk transport. Maybe my partner and I are in the van, we're transporting an inmate, you know, a top 200, top 50, how they call that. Maybe you're in a chase car, somebody's coming up to do something. You may need to stop that vehicle. Things can go bad really quick. I'm retired police, I've had traffic stops go every which way bad you could think of. You need to know what to do if you're behind that wheel. Correction officers are always posting, you know, we're the same as police officers. Then, then do the same training. Watch the same video. Police go through an extensive training on traffic stops. They practice with role playing over and over. As an instructor on the sheriff's department, I did traffic stops with paintball guns and some munition. I'd be the bad guy, I would jump out, I would race at him, I would jump on the hood of the cruiser. I put him in all kinds of scenarios to make them react and be prepared as a police officer behind the wheel. Correction folks, you need that same training. You need that same stress. You're going to put a uniform and a badge on and get in a vehicle, company vehicle, you need to know what to do. Lastly, your personal vehicle, your personal life. They are attacking us in uniform. Corrections are not. I just reposted a video about shot avoidance. How many, how many correction officers in the United States have been attacked at their home, followed to the gas station, shot at the gas station? They're coming. You go to pump gas, you pull up the gas station, you're behind a wheel, next to the gas pump, you got a high risk explosion potential right there. Besides you getting killed, you need to know what to do behind the wheel. I'm gonna end this in a story. I'm alive and my wife is alive because I had a plan. Back in the 90s, we were married, didn't have any kids yet. First got married, newlyweds, shortly after. We were down in Lexington, Kentucky, went to go to the mall, come up to a red light big intersection, two lanes on each side, so it's four lanes each direction, you know, four times four, 16 lanes, it's big, a lot of lights, we're about the third car back, the next lane, uh, the very first was a red old pickup truck, two guys in the truck, passenger gets out, my wife is driving, and I have my Glock 22 with me, I'm in the passenger seat, he gets out, starts to walk, first thing I'm thinking of, we're behind the wheel, we're in traffic, we can't drive and escape. How am I gonna protect us? What am I gonna do if he comes to us or to somebody else with a life-threatening situation? Well, he's walking, starts walking over to the driver's door where my wife is. I've already got my Glock out, my Glock's already up. Like this, I'm into high ready. He just hasn't seen it yet. Her, I said, you know, make sure the door's locked because back in the 90s, cars didn't have automatic locked doors. You had to manually lock that door. We were in a Buick. Window up, door locked. Come, He starts coming, and, I, and he's got his eyeballs fixed on her, I know. I said, look up, turn to I said, honey, look to the left. Close your eyes. Don't open them until I tell you. She turned her head like this. Closed her eyes. He started coming to there. I put that gun right by the glass. See my hand right here? I'm poking glass. The barrel was right there. That Glock 40 would have shot through that glass. When he realized the big hole of that Glock 40 was looking right in between his eyes, he turned around and ran and got back in that truck. I'm not sure his intentions, but it wasn't good. Remember in the 90s, the big carjacking all over Atlanta, Georgia. Other states were doing this. I don't know his intention, but I know my intention. Protect her and me. 
with my Glock. And I did, because I had a plan. You may be faced with that situation. What if we would have had kids in there? I could have exited the passenger side, went around the front of the hood, but then that lets him come run over here, and then we're playing Tom and Jerry, cat and mouse, running around a car, exposing my family to danger. Instead of getting out, I decided to stay in the car and put myself put myself in a position closer to where the threat would be and protect her. That's why. Correction officers, I'm posting a link with this. Please watch this video. Learn the seven danger zones of a traffic stop. Hit the like. Don't forget to share this. And the subscribe button because you all love these videos. I, I speak it. I talk it like it's real. See you soon.